Welcome to episode 6 of this, Building Modern GUIs and Applications with the Python Kivi series. Now previously we left off, we created a nice grid layout. We could input some email data, uh, a masked password, we would click the submit button and from there we could go ahead and view those details in the console because we had specified the logic to capture that. That's great. However, inevitably, we will have to create more complex GUIs and applications. And one of the current constraints we have is if we had multiple sheets, so multiple Kivi files, it'd be difficult to connect this right now because what we're doing, as you can see, we had named our Kivi file with the default logic where we would take the first part of our main app class which is just test and we would name our kivi file lowercase test and it would know to connect those but we've actually got something called kivi builder and this will allow us to connect multiple sheets and sort of hard code in those values so that kivi can parse those together and it knows how to connect without having this sort of um a silly naming ruler or it will, will at least not prove the most effective down the line so we'll look at the kivi builder today it is worth noting that you can go to the documentation on kivi.org forward slash doc. I'm going through it here just to demonstrate that it's not the most helpful. Um, it's not really presented in layman's terms. Uh, so if you're quite new to Kivi, uh, you may find this a bit complex. We talk about instances of classes, but if you're not used to sort of uh, working with classes in Python, you may get a bit confused there. So I will go ahead and attempt to explain this in simple terms. This is one of the methods, build.load underscore string, but we can actually build directly from a file in our directory. So don't worry if this looks complex, I will explain it in a much more friendly way as we progress. So here we are, exactly where we left off at the end of episode five. Now first, let's imported dependencies as normal. So the first one we're going to require is builder and we can import that from kivi.lang and I'm also going to show a nice helpful tip here um, which will actually help us to change our window color from the default black to white because you may have wondered why that often happens and how to get around that. So we can take from kivi.core.window import window. I'll show that after I show off the two real methods that you have for, for using the kivi builder. So what I'll do to demonstrate this, uh, or the standard logic that we have for connecting the files, you'll see that we got test.kv because it's a lowercase version of our main class, as I specified before. So let's actually go ahead and rename in this directory, which is uh, I've called employee GUI from the last tutorial. Let's rename the Kivi file, so just test2. And then we're going to see that this won't connect by default, so we will be forced into using the Kivi builder. So if I go ahead now and attempt to run this file, what we should see is just a plain black blank screen. And that's what we get because Kivi has no way currently of parsing um, that file to the Python um, sort of core file that we have. So we now need to rely on the Kivi builder if we want to use different naming conventions and really more accurate naming conventions. And it will help us uh, it'll make things a bit more readable down the line and easier to follow when we've got multiple different files floating about. So what we can actually just do is write builder.load underscore file and providing it's in the current directory or folder, we can just connect that. You can see it works now by just specifying the name of the file. So it'd just be test2.kv in between um, single quotations or double quotations, whatever your preference may be. And you can see it works exactly the same as before. And it's that simple. And you may have to connect lots of files when you have bigger GUIs or applications, which you can simply do by just repeating this line with the different names of the files. It can be that easy. Now, there is another more verbose way to do this. But before that, um, I've commented out the builder load file there. So you can see now, as we'd expect, the connection is still broken. Um, so we're going to need to use the Kivi builder again, not the default behavior. But this time we can use load underscore string. Now, what you can do here is use, essentially, for a multi-line string, you can use three sets of singular double quotation marks. And we're actually just going to copy and paste in everything from our Kivi file. And this will do exactly the same thing. Now, I can't think of many instances where this would be, or any instances, actually, where this would be more useful than the standard just taking the, the detail from a file. There may be some constraints, but I would suggest 
although this works as you can see exactly the same it's uh infinitely more verbose and it will make things harder to read down the line um yeah and it, it sort of takes away from some things that we're doing like trying to abstract our code and separate things out because now it's just a lot bulkier so what i'm actually going to do here is I just wanted to showcase that this works. Um, I'm actually just going to delete this whole thing because we really just want to use the the standard Kivi builder there and we'll be able to get the desired behavior uh, very easily, as you can see. Um, remember if you're, well, we can see that this works again, just to showcase, but remember if you're, um, if you are having issues displaying that or connecting it, potentially it's because your Kivi file, your design language file, isn't in the same directory or folder. So you may just have to use, um, you know, the actual long file path from your system to, to connect that up. And I just wanted to make this video that bit more valuable by just adding in a helpful tip. You saw that we imported window. Well, what we can do here is just after our build method in the main app, we can type window with a capital W dot clean color. Um, and we can specify that with four values um, that are one. And then when we save this, control S, and then run the file, you will see that this will actually generate um, a white background because, yeah, you may not want that, essentially that dark mode um, as standard. You would obviously have to go ahead and, you know, amend the, the color of the text um, text and or labels and some of the other detail button um, text and so on. But, uh, yeah, that, that's how you would do it. So. Um, nothing complex there, just just a handy tip for you to have as well, but we'll return to sort of the default. Um, so yeah, that is how we can go ahead and connect files very easily without having to adhere to that default naming behavior um, and stick around for episode seven, which will be released shortly and we'll look further into layouts and again, working towards creating some valuable applications and GUIs.